one day to well would i call it um you know Tinubu's was one year in office really so the administration of president bola Tinubu will be um exactly one year tomorrow well on today's breakfast show we'll be looking at several hot topics one of which um, is voters registration and which proceeds in edo and ondo states so um election will be coming in soon and voters are already um being asked to register another is nigeria Nigeria Air remains indefinitely suspended and that's been said by the Aviation Minister um, Festus Kiyamo. We'll also be taking global stories making headlines in our national dailies as well as some top trending stories this morning. So it's a beautiful um, Tuesday morning here in the city of Lagos and how are you doing? Um, on today's breakfast show like I said we have a lot in store for you. Now moving over to the top trending stories, this first one talks about Doye Diri upheld as BIOS state governor. Now on Monday 27th of May, which is yesterday um, in Abuja, the BIOS state governorship election petition tribunal upheld the election that produced Doye Diri as governor of BIOS state following a petition by the All Progressive Congress APC governorship candidate in the 11 November 2024 governorship election in the state, Timipri Sil. In November 2023, Diri, the People's Democratic Party PDP candidate, won the governorship poll with a total of 175 196 votes as against Silver's 110,108 um, votes. Diri thereby secured his second term against which Silver um, filed a petition. A three man panel led by Justice Adekunle Adelaide dismissed both the petition and APC party for lacking in merit. Now, the tribunal pointed out that it was contradictory for Mr. Silver to urge the tribunal to declare him winner of the poll while asking it to also invalidate the election. The judges further held that Silver and APC did not tender electoral matters uh, materials as evidence of irregularity occurring during um, the election. It was also concluded that in failing to show Polling units by polling units, the particulars of the non-compliance they alleged and how it substantially affected the outcome of the election. The petitioners also failed to discharge the legal burden of proof. All right, so that is it for our first top trending story, which is talking about um, Doye Diri being um, the winner, well, in the tribunal here. And he's been, he's been said he is the governor. And so, um, you know, whatever the APC candidate, Timmy Perry Silva, is saying kind of lacks merit by the courts now. I have some questions. Yamgul is here. He has joined me. And Yamgul, I want to get your take on this. I know that we always say, um, you know, the... The courts are the ones who appoint or who elect, you know, elect. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, um, I wish we would get to a stage where we don't have all these litigations after mm -hmm. elections. I wish that uh, INEC will get it right at some point and not be dictated to, to the money backs because that's the perception that a mm. lot of people have and all that. But I congratulate. Uh, uh, by Elsans, because uh, it is after a judgment like this that the governor really sits down to um, to do what is governance, the real mm. governance that it is. Uh, we've heard that story from by Elsa. We've heard another one from Kogi that he also mm -hmm. has had a uh, um, judgment in his favor and all that. So mm -hmm. let's hope that the governors will do the needful from here on out. But let's also hope that they got this judgment rightly. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is it. Yeah, I, I know most times, you know, when this happens, they go to court and then the judges are the ones who rule. And then people obviously say, we're not really the ones that are electing these people. Mm -hmm. The courts are the ones who are, you know, putting the leaders in place. Now, being, you know, the governor, obviously, like you said, he's already, now he can calm down and start to do the work because he's not thinking of what if I'm being, you know, sent out away from office. So I just and hope we'll that... Spending money unnecessarily on... Yes. money will change hands. Of Whether course, like yeah. So I, with this... I know it's not, sorry, I know it's not only Nigeria that the people, so to speak, do not elect finally have the, the say about who becomes their their leader it, there's a, a system in america that I, till now i don't understand mm. the people they call the electoral college 
which are yes. very few people. So why go to the polls if these are the people who are ultimately will decide? Mm. Uh, the only difference is that these people are also ordinary people, mm -hmm. even though they are given that privilege to be whatever they are. Yeah. But they are ordinary people, not the courts that you will go because you are you want to fight mm -hmm. over a thing, mm -hmm. and then they decide who gets it, whether mm -hmm. they decide it rightly or wrongly. Sometimes they jettison the constitution and do whatever yeah. they feel like doing. I think talking about the courts, my my worry is I don't want a situation whereby we get to the points um, where people don't really think of the credibility of the courts because almost everything now go to court you say we shouldn't get to that point <laughs> we're are probably we at that point where are now? We right now? because almost every any any election that happens in nigeria i've, I've really seen in, in especially in this past one i've really seen someone win and the other person isn't trying to go to court to say you know what you know there was some malpractice to this i'm supposed to be the winner and then the courts are the ones who are doing the ruling so well, even if we're there now, <laughs> I hope, you know, the judges are doing the right thing. And because you want a situation whereby people trust your judgment. Because when you are a judge, you know, you're revered. You say a word, it is like a pronouncement. It's like a proclamation. Like, you're, there's that reverence to it. So, you don't want it to be something that you can just say and everybody like, mm, okay. Yes, know, you've said that again. patriotism and integrity have great roles to play in uh, giving the right judgment but mm -hmm. i also know that the human factor is there it is only now that they are clamoring for judges to have better pay which yes. is so wrong a judge should be paid well the police the army should be paid well mm -hmm. these are the people who are risking their lives mm -hmm. even the uh, so if, if you are if you are now talking about increasing the pay of the judges that means you are you're preparing them to be compromised and all that. So mm. they should do something about it. Let these people be remunerated well. Yes. Let them be given other incentives, not even just uh, remuneration. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you take care of their children. Mm -hmm. as, as Welfare well as, packages. Yes. HMOs. As, yes. So all these things should be put in place so that, that the judges will feel satisfied enough. And then the inter their integrity will be intact. Because yeah. If you have a hundred people and you stab them for a lot of uh, a lot of days, it only takes not, a matter of not time. all of them will turn mm -hmm. out will 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 endure the, the starvation for the mm -hmm. hundred days. You place something before them, some of them might feel far. Yes, not no. Why you even dang, dangle it over yeah, them? It only takes a matter thief, of time. But, you know, so well, yeah, but their backs are up against the wall, <laughs> so there's nothing much, much I can do. So yeah, welfare of the judges is paramount. Mm -hmm. uh, when if we're looking for their integrity, because not every thief is a thief because of, of they just the feel nature, like stealing, yeah. circumstances, yeah. and all that. So. Yeah. Do well, congrats issue. to um, Joye Diri for mm -hmm. being the elected and, governor uh, Ahmed Ododo of, of Bayo State as well. So, mm. And all the people who have uh, won their cases, mm. sit down and govern now. Yeah, yes. now is the time to do the work, mm -hmm. the real work, and making sure that, you know, your state is being developed. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing I would really like to see for the states is for them to be able to generate revenue for themselves. You know, let the states be able to run by themselves and if possible, send money to the federal government. I think a lot of people are lazy. From the federal government to the state government, they are lazy. Because after 100 days, I saw uh, what a lot of governors put out as things they have achieved in 100 days. And some of the things they said they had achieved was having a state executive meeting. So they, if you had it 10 times in 100 days, you put it there as one of your achievements. Achievements. As, as in, uh, how, what are you No projects. No project, nothing. No, no project in, uh, in view even. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not expecting you in 100 days to do To magic. have completed yes, so, so many things. Give us a roadmap and say, because of this, this is what we conceived and we are going to achieve it. Let's, mm -hmm. let's be able to trust you and all that. You don't have to show us a project you have done, you have uh, co conceived and completed in a hundred days show us that this thing is going to work because we sat together and this is what we decided and this is how we're going to get the revenue to do this and that and you're mm. telling me state executive council mm. meeting is an achievement everything is evidence of democracy in nigeria it's oh well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, well we just need to do we're not that. even talking about how a 32 year old bridge has been recommissioned and all mm -hmm. that we're not even saying that mm. let that just slide I have nothing to say. No <laughs> Let comment. it just slide. <laughs> Let it just slide. Okay, so court orders Bayero and others to cease parading themselves as emirs.
uh, a high court in Kano State has on Monday 27th of uh, May 2024 in Abuja ordered Aminu Adobairo to cease parading as the 15th Emir of Kano. Police were also instructed to evict him from the mini palace at the state road. The court order also affects other traditional rulers. It restrains Nasiru Adobairo, Ibrahim Abubakar II, Kabir Mohammed Inua, and Aliyu Ibrahim Gaya from parading themselves as emirs of Bichi, Gaya, Rano, and Karai, respectively. The order is effective until 11th of June 2024 when the substantive no motion will be heard. All this followed the Federal High Court ruling on Thursday, 23rd of May 2024, which restrained the reinstatement of Muhammad Sanusi II as Emir of Kanu and suspended the law establishing the dissolved five emirates in the state. However, Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf contested the ruling, claiming that the judge who issued it, Justice Mohammed Liman, was doing so from the United States. He insisted that there is nothing stopping the recognition of Muhammadu Sanusi II as Emir of Kanu. The person that, is, that issued the court order was in America, but he is ordering us to stop. That's what he said in his words. He's mm. ordering us to stop what we are doing. This issue of abuse, I must present it before the governor's forum so that we can tackle it accordingly. Mm. Mm. Kanu is uh, boiling, so to speak. Yeah, there's uh, been... Um, protests in the streets mm -hmm. of Kano. Um, even the governor has, you know, asked for the arrest of anyone who is, you know, causing tension in the state. Now, with this, I mean, Sanusi was deposed before, you know, they created, I think, four new four emirates. Uh, emirates. And, and now they're trying to revert back to having just one. Mm. Do yeah. you think, I, I think one question I asked was, do you think it's possible for them to still have four of them and have Sanusi as the head? Uh, I don't think that is, that's going to happen. It but is that, is that a possibility? Instead of having like so many tensions around, because obviously you know when you're being deposed, it, it, it's, it's not a nice feeling. It's uh, almost like you had, you had some office, you had some power, you, had, you, you just ruled, sort of. And my, then, my quarrel but that's the people, same thing Sanusi felt, yeah. you know. My quarrel with the Kano people is that when Sanusi was deposed, they didn't say anything. Maybe they took the, the part of peace, and I don't know why they're talking right now. Uh, that is a, a, a sacred office, so mm -hmm. to speak, and... A governor bastardized it just because of personal reasons, I, mm. I must say. And it, it, it made him uh, to do something that would make him a bit popular because mm. you are affecting more families, mm -hmm. you are affecting more yes, people. Yes, now there's everybody power in say, numbers. Yeah, mm -hmm. Everybody will say, this is our person, he has, he has become an emir and all mm -hmm. that. First of all, I don't think the traditional institution should have, um, the, the political institution should have so much influence on the yes, traditional institution exactly. let the people decide what they're going to do but where a governor can hire and fire a traditional chief and you want them to 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 function as people who are independent and all that i don't see that as something that is working and i don't i don't think we should be thinking of the traditional institution as a political office because that's yeah. what it has been reduced to yeah. right now it doesn't even have to be the best candidate or the traditionally recognized candidate. So long as you're close enough to the cor corridors of power, that you become you become whatever. You, they but want that's you not to be. because I mean, if I look at you know the Benin Kingdom, it is one of the sacred kingdoms mm -hmm. in Nigeria right now, or even in Africa, because you see the succession the succession line, you know, from father to son, just like that, Oba Kenzo, just like that. And I think that's how it's supposed to be, because if you're telling me that this is a king, or this is an emir, and uh, one Oba, one Olu, one, you know, I feel like it is supposed to be about succession. You're just going it to, is not about to, appointment. To and I am kingdom. from Delta State. Different I know that this has also happened in Delta State where some kings are being appointed. But how can you be a king? I, I, what I understand by, you know, ruling a kingdom is more of a father who is a king, a son who now be, who is a prince who becomes the king. If there is no son, they look for the next in line to the throne. That's how it goes. If you look at... Um, you know, England, for instance, you had the king at first. You then he had a daughter. 
she became the queen she has a son he's now the king they've even made you know a new pronouncement whereby um whether you're your son or a daughter as long as you're the first child you can be um, an heir apparent to the throne and that's how it's supposed to be that is what i understand by kingship not an appointment that you know i'm the governor i can tell you who's going to be the king because what you're doing is you're watering down the sacredness of that office yeah, you're, you're, I, you're, I do you, believe in fairness to them i do believe that uh, in in africa in nigeria we have what we call the royal family from mm -hmm. where um anybody can come uh, that is if there's no particular heir apparent that yes that's the about. succession so line the next in line there's a family yes. there's a royal family and Addo Bayero and Sanusi are related. They are, they are cousins, I think. Uh, and unfortunately... Uh, or, or but is Sanusi still alive? Unfor unfortunately or fortunately, it, the incest is not a, an issue in the northern Nigeria, especially okay. in Kano, at least in this context. They are cousins, and Bayero's daughter is married to Sanusi, I think. So they are cousins, they are in-laws, they are everything. <laughs> so when we even talk, we are talking about the same family. Mm -hmm. But the thing is... The way Sanusi was removed had nothing to do with tradition. It had everything to do with politics. It was yes, very and that's the problem. He was criticizing the governor then. And even if there's something else, that's what everybody saw, mm -hmm. that it was political. So you removed him. And in order for you to gain popularity, you now, you now destroyed the emirate, which was very strong, powerful as one. Mm -hmm. And then you brought a lot of other chiefs that will do your bidding. So now the people have come together and said, okay, this is not what we want. We want our, our emirate to be what it used to be, our yeah. kingdom to be the way it used to be, and we are reverting to the old law. They have their rights. Federal government doesn't even have any, any right to interfere and all that, except there's a breakdown of law and order. Yeah. So let's see how it plays out. Let's see how it plays out. And I don't mm -hmm. know how a judge from America will, anyway, <laughs> you see, our, even our president can rule from anywhere. So why can't he just make a pronouncement but can you? from anywhere? <laughs> so, Is that even right? <laughs> well, constitutionally, they didn't say you can't make that pronouncement or you can't rule from anywhere. Yeah, but that's but, why, but that's why right, they say the constitution is very ambiguous because... When you put it that way, then who's supposed to be here to really rule? Yeah, so, if you can rule from so I, can, I can be a representative of my village, but they'll never see me till the end of four years. And that's what happens to a lot of them. They have their constituency offices, which they never open until it's close to elections, mm. or they want to come and do empowerment uh, mm. after, after three years, mm. give you back Because the they're trying to campaign. Yes. Or they, they, they just gather young girls and give them um, the dryers and some generators, people who were never trained in mm. the art. You just give them everything that they can open. Or give them bikes. A, or a lot something. of them sell it at the, at the venue. <laughs> So I'm moving on. I don't know what kind of empowerment is that. Oh, well, let's move over to our final top trending story. This one talks about Children's Day, which was yesterday, and it says First Lady announces Young Farmers School Club. Well, at the State House on Monday, 27th of May 2024, in celebration of Children's Day, First Lady Oluremi Tinubu announced the imminent launch of Young Farmers Club in state owned primary and secondary schools across Nigeria. Children will have a garden in their school. They will nurture um, with awards such as equipping the sc of school libraries to be presented to the school with the best farm. The initiative is intended to be a part of efforts to encourage farming among the young population in the country. The First Lady also announced a grant of 10 million naira to each school that participated in the special Children's Day event, of which there were 16 in total. That is nice. I like it. I, I mean, I love initiatives. And you have to teach the children while they're young. So having a garden, and I think I used to have a garden when I was in secondary school. So I'm wondering if they're bringing this back. Is it that the garden went away or what happened I, at I some point? I just can't imagine. First of all, the children's the celebration. Congratulations to all children. Yeah. You know, um, we, can, we cannot say this enough. You know, may God lead you where you should be and make you... Uh, contribute your own quota Amen. as he has wanted you to do. Now, I don't know, when I was growing up, 27 May was the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, we got to meet friends, we got to interact, we got to do sports. Yeah. You, know, you run, win prizes, you play football, you do high There's jump a lot of all, activities. A lot of things, dances and all that. It used to be the thing we were looking forward to. I don't know what happened to it and now 
everybody just wants to because local government uh, you should have some zones schools in those zones will come and meet and all that that's that's how people get to interact and tomorrow they will meet again and this is where they met and all that i don't know what happened to it i hope we can come back to that but young farmers club i was president of young farmers club in my school and i remember that we had gardens we were planting vegetables exactly. and all that and we were selling these vegetables that is young yes. girl yes. we was how do could you, you do that do you know how you were selling do you yeah do you know how it feels to see to watch something grow? Is that you, yes. is that you, you're contributing you're you're helping god in creation yes like you, you still just because like you it. have like those seedlings they tell you to take it home you come back you go to the farm you plant we did a lot of things i had oranges lot of, lot so that's what i'm things. wondering like where did that go to if they're trying to start this initiative because it's not something that's new it, it, it just it teaches you discipline, it teaches you patience. appreciation, it teaches patience. you patience, it a lot of things. Yeah. You just learn from, from there. And I don't know why. Well, if, they, if, if it went away and she's bringing it back, then Thank kudos. God for that. I, yeah. I hope it's nationwide anyway. Yeah, I think, I think it is. I, I think it is. All right, we'll go on a short break. we look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.